Air pollution now causes more than 4 million deaths a year. New York City has made big strides since the days when its air was the dirtiest in the country. But air pollution is still a factor, depending on where you are and what you're doing. And it might be affecting the health of one group that prides itself on being healthy, the 86,000 New Yorkers who commute by bike every day. Kara Smith is the project manager for a National Institute of Health Sciences grant looking at how pollution affects cyclists in New York City. To do this, she's turned 91 commuting bike riders into guinea pigs, strapping them with air and heart rate monitors and gathering that data over six days. What are my various tracking methods in this? So, what you do is you have two respiratory sensors. One is right in the built-in sports bra at the okay. bottom of the band. Um, the other is right around your abdominal. So what it's doing is it's getting the minute ventilation. It's essentially how much you're breathing in um, in liters per minute. This is a black carbon monitor. It's gonna go in this pocket. Coordinated riding. It's not surprising that riding behind a diesel truck spewing fumes in your face isn't great for your health. But by combining these two measurements, the minute ventilation and the amount of black carbon, Kara and her team have a much better measure of how much pollution cyclists are actually inhaling. They call this the potential inhaled dose. So why is going up the bridge going to be one of the worst spots, I guess. So, um, it's one of the worst because you're exerting more energy when you're going uphill, so you're breathing heavier. And then the other thing is, we're right next to a bunch of cars. I mean, the largest thing is just distance from traffic. Yeah. But one of the questions we're still asking is like, how far away do you need to be? Like, what is that critical point where it actually makes a difference? On our route, the pollution we inhaled was greatest as we biked up the Williamsburg Bridge and through downtown Manhattan. But that's just one ride. Kara has recorded hundreds like this over the past three years. The median, the Williamsburg Bridge, is a little cleaner. That data is being analyzed by Darby Jack, a health scientist, and Stephen Chilrud, an environmental geochemist. In your short ride, you had quite a bit of variability. And yet when we go down and look at our, our black carbon potential inhaled dose, you're, you're still at the lower end because you were at the lower end of how hard you were breathing. So this, the units on that bottom uh, map, it are nanograms per minute. So that's a measure of how much air pollution is being deposited in your lung. If you're breathing 10 times as hard, you're basically inhaling 10 times as much pollution. Even if cyclists are breathing in more pollution, the researchers aren't telling anyone to stop biking. But their study could be used to make that bike commute a little healthier. Best thing you can do for your health is get a lot of exercise, and, and our, our results don't contradict that. Um, I think we're asking a slightly different question. So would you be better off choosing either a different route or a different time of day? The question from a policy point of view is, can city governments put bicycling infrastructure in places that reduce air pollution uh, concentrations and, and reduce risk. 